What are the thorns in your flesh? Paul confesses today to having a thorn in his flesh or two. What are those troubled areas in our lives that can sometimes bring us down to our knees, but if we open ourselves up to God's grace, can heal us in ways that we cannot even begin to imagine? We all have them. We've had them, we have them, and we will. It's part of the experience of life. It's a difficult thing at times, indeed. But those thorns exist, and they do produce pain and suffering. I know as a uh, member of AA, it's often, you know, a lot of people in AA say, well, that are in recovery, that move forward with their recovery, they will say, uh, and we say, and I've said it myself, I suppose, that addiction was one of the great blessings in life because addiction created an opportunity for those in the fellowship of AA to find new hope, to find new meaning, to find new life in ways that they may not have been able to find otherwise. That that addiction to alcohol or drugs served as certainly a bottoming out experience, but also a gateway to a whole new life if those who gathered made that decision to turn their lives over to the care of God as they understood God. And as those members do that, they begin to experience graces upon grace and imagine a new life that they otherwise might not have been able to imagine. And this is part of the experience of recognizing that in our woundedness, in those thorns that exhibit and exist in our lives, we have this opportunity to turn that over and to create new space and to allow the Spirit of God to come into our lives in ways that it may otherwise not have happened. It's in our woundedness that we become community because we share God's love with each other. Now, today in the lessons, we know that Paul... Paul had a thorn in his flesh, and we're not really sure what it is. There's all kinds of different theories about what that could have been. It could have simply been he was fighting the cynics of his day, uh, a group of people that were fighting against the gospel message, and he was in a lot of theological discourse that was troubling and, and painful for him to go through. He may have had a physical problem, an emotional problem. It could have been almost anything, but the interesting thing was that Paul identified the fact that there was something in his life that was creating this distress. And it was real. It wasn't imagined. It, there was a thorn in his flesh. Something was hurting, and it was hurting really, really bad. Now, Paul, now Paul, uh, being a child of God, being a servant of Christ, recognizing this pain, he's, in, he's asking God to please take this pain away. He asked three times, please take it from me. And the response back is, you know what, Paul? My grace is sufficient for your life. I am here. I am with you. No matter how much you may be suffering, you need to understand that I am with you. And my grace and my presence is truly sufficient. Because life will have its ups and downs. There will be pain. There will be suffering. There will be situations that we just struggle to get through. And they don't just go away. But the thing that we recognize and the thing that Paul recognized as he wrote to the church in Corinth is that no matter what goes on in our lives, God is with us individually and collectively. Jesus himself, there was a thorn in his side. I mean, imagine going back to your hometown. He was already becoming a bit of a rock star. A lot of people were following him. He, he was the buzz of Galilee, and yet he goes home and is not greeted with a hero's welcome. The people that might have in some ways mattered most to Jesus in his, in his human form were the people that were kind of dismissive to him. And that had to hurt. We've been there too. Maybe we've had a parent or a relative or a sibling or a friend that we so much wanted to share something with. 
And we were so excited about that we had this gift, we had this whatever it might be, and then only to be dismissed or to be rejected or to be minimized in some sort of way and how much that really does hurt. Jesus in his humanness, he experienced it. But somehow Jesus in his humanness, being fully God and fully man, he somehow took a deep cleansing breath and recognized, you know, there's more to the world than just my stinking kinfolk in Nazareth. We're going to keep moving. I love them all. But we're going to send out the disciples to neighboring villages two by two. And these disciples that were sent out with the power of Jesus were sent out to do more miraculous things than Jesus ever, ever did in Nazareth. The gift of Christ, the gift of God's love, continued to blossom and grow out of this painful experience that Jesus had in his very hometown. We today, we today uh, are people of faith. We are disciples of Christ trying to continue to move forward with our lives, filled with hopes, filled with dreams, filled with some anxieties, filled with pain, filled with doubt, fill, filled with fear, filled with hope, filled with joy. Each one of us has this unique experience, and it's different for each one of us every single day. All days are not equal. But in our pain and in our suffering, we are invited to remember that no matter what that thorn might be, and it is real, it is not to be denied, it is part of the human experience, never to be minimized. The good news that we can have out of that pain, because the pain's real, and it's not like we want it. Nobody wants pain. But the good news is we know and we profess and we trust that no matter what is going on in our lives, Jesus is with us. The Holy Spirit is with us. God is with us. We do not have to walk alone. And as a community of faith, we are reminded that we come together, each one of us uniquely gifted and yet uniquely broken. But we as a community here at TLC have this opportunity to be knit together through the power of the Holy Spirit, to become a new body of Christ. And collectively, through that experience, we are invited and we do generate a new kind of light that moves out into the world and establishes a measure of peace and mercy and forgiveness. And so today, we recognize that we have been given this power and that we don't walk alone. And no matter what those thorns are, God is not a band-aid. It's something much more. Amen.